Welcome everybody back to Fast CPA and Consultants. A warm welcome to our CPA, Fulton Abraham Sanchez. Hi, Fulton, welcome back. Thank you, hi. Hi, so as you may know, in this video series, we are talking about different tax strategies that you must follow according to your situation. And we will answer all the received questions through our social network. Today, we continue talking about letters from the IRS which was divided into three parts. So now we are ready to continue with chapter two. Fulton, shall we start? Yes. Perfect. So we have the first letter of this chapter, CP90, intent to seize assets to the person and notice of your right to a hearing. Okay. This is the second group of letters where things change a lot. In this, um, there is not any more the say the easiness or the the ability to fix this with a phone call or with a finding a, a document. In this case, the IRS is telling you that CP90 intend to seize your asset and right to here and it's telling you that the, your assets are going to be seized, meaning they are going to be taken. The IRS is going to take your asset. The only option uh, that you have at this point is to pay your debt. This is if you have the money. If you don't have the money, obviously you will have, if you do something, the IRS, and like an offer and compromise, the, uh, and if this is accepted, the IRS will not seize your bank account, for example. But, but you have to prove that the amount in the bank is, uh, with at least six months of history in the bank statements, that the amount of the bank is just to satisfy your your obligation, meaning that pay rent, buy groceries, um, buy ga I mean, gas, uh, pay your utilities, and in, uh, but you have to give that information to the IRS. Do not expect that just because you have no money and you barely have money cash to cover your expenses, the IRS is going to forgive you. No, if you do, if you do nothing, the IRS, even that money is going to be taken, it's going to be seized. And you are not going to be able to do anything. You are not going to be able to get that money back. That's the danger. But every money the IRS takes is, is going to be, is not going to be taken. It's, gonna, it's not going to be uh, given back. Even if this is a, even this is money from your business because you uh, you, you you might think the IRS is gonna is not gonna is not gonna quit kidnap my my bank account from from the business. No, the IRS is going to take the money from your business because you are the owner of the business and you owe money and you owe money because you, your business makes profits and, and and because you have profits and you didn't pay your taxes that you have this debt. So the IRS being that your business is also under your control the irs can also um or has the ability to kidnap your bank accounts the bank accounts of the business especially or specifically if the bank if you are the only shareholder if you are the only shareholder of the bank of the business and if there is a bank account with money the IRS is going to take it if there are multiple shareholders then the IRS cannot take or multiple members of the LLC, they cannot take because if money commingles from other parties that don't have any problem. But if you have an account, uh, if you have a bank account and the IRS is thinking, and the IRS, and you receive this letter, and you also have a bank account for the business, and you are the only shareholder of that business or the only partner of the business, the IRS is going to take both. So do not believe that because you have a bank account in, for the business, that money is safe, no. What you need to do when you receive an intent to seize assets, a CP90 letter, is to request a hearing and uh, pay your debt. And explain the reason why you didn't pay, or if you're not able to pay, then ask for an offer in compromise. But at this point, I will suggest do not handle this because it's very difficult, the terminology and the pressure and the and all the emotions that are running when you are doing this. You think that it is unjust, it is unfair, believe me, the IRS thinks that it is all justified and it is fair to collect taxes 
and therefore you are not going to be emotionally and psychologi psychologically prepared for a challenge like this. So talk to a professional, either a CPA and a tax attorney or an old agent with experience in uh, dealing with IRS debt resolution and let the professionals handle this because this is dangerous. Even if you have no money, even if you are, if you say, if you are broke, if you are living with someone, if you have nothing, you call the IRS and say, I have nothing. I am living with a relative. I, I have no income. I have no work for this, for this month. I can prove all what I say. And the IRS is going to put you an economic calamity. And if your situation keeps the same, it's going to be forgiven after 10 years that you have to receive no income. When the, your income, when your situation improves, you your start making you know, money, earning income, the IRS is going to receive that from your employer, from the 1099 that you receive. And the IRS is going to send you a letter saying, no, it's a balance rule, that you have to pay your debt. But at that point, the whole amount of the debt is going to be due. So it's complicated depending on your situation. You might be able to apply for an offering compromise depending if you are in technical bankruptcy, meaning you are not able to, to pay your debts and you barely have for, for rent, groceries, and utilities, or you might not even have that, and you have the option to do an economic calamity, apply for economic calamity, what is called uh, debts to doubts to collection, and apply for that status. But it will take, it, it, will, it will mean that you have to stay for uh, that way for 10 years if you want to be. Um, free of your debt. So there are there's there are consequences of doing anything. The IRS is going to kidnap your bank account, garnish your your salary, or is going to put and and or is going to put a lien on your property. If if that if all that is not enough to cover your debt, uh, the IRS um, is going to put you, let's say Sometimes the IRS puts the debt in automatic collection, but that is when the, the IRS cannot find you. There's no way to find you. You don't reply to any letter. There is no money report to the account of the IRS at all. The IRS will put it automatically in collection, in the collection. But that will change the moment that you start making payments. So there are many, there are options that you have. You can do, you can opt for a payment of the entire amount you might, you might um, even get away with an installment agreement. If you have no money, you are in, in bankrupt, technical bankruptcy, you can do an offering compromise or, or if the IRS, uh, you have no money, you're broke, like in the streets, the IRS is, is gonna put you on hold for 10 years, like, like broke. But all of these options need, are, will be the consequences of you doing something. They are not automatically. They do not happen automatically. You have to make them happen. So whenever you receive this, find a professional experience in IRS debt resolution. Do not go to any accountant who says that he does that because and any accountant who is unlicensed, that person would not be, a, be able to help you because the IRS does not talk in the, in the cases of debt, IRS debt, tax debt, do not talk to unlicensed accountants. So only CPAs, certified public accountants, attorneys, and enrolled agents are qualified to help you with those things. Got it, clear. And what about the CP297, intent to seize assets back to the business and notice of your right to hearing? CP297 is for the business. This is, this is for example, for a corporation, because in, uh, in the case of S corporations, a small business, a, a small business corporation, and LCs, those, those companies will not ever will not ever have a um, debt because LCs with uh, with two or more partners and S corporations with one owner or more, they do not pay taxes. It is the owner. So the, the profits of the LLC for with two partners and the S corporation with even one member, with even one shareholder, the, the profits will become the profits of the owner. The profits of the company will become the profits of the owner and the owner will have to pay taxes on those debts. But whenever it's a CP 297, it's intent to seize assets to the business, 
and, and notice of your right of hearing, meaning that you have the right to a hearing before the execution of this. That's why you said in the, in the previous case, they are giving you they are giving you the notice that you also have a right for a hearing, meaning you can explain your case. And, and in this, if you opt for this right of hear, to hearing, you call the IRS, you explain the situation that you are broke, you're on the street, the IRS will put you for 10 years. That is doubt to collection, meaning if you have that, obviously, if you are in that situation, you cannot even afford an accountant, um, a CPA, and someone to help you. So you call the IRS and say, I'm broke, and I live practically, I'm living with a relative, I have no income, I'm unemployed, and I am through all that, I can submit my, my bank statements, that I have no money in my bank account. And they will say, okay, they will send you some papers. At that point is when you need to, you need to may, maybe borrow money from someone <clears throat> and then talk to, an, to, a, to, a, to a, a, a CPA, an attorney, or an enrolled agent to see what, they are, what information you are going to provide and if that is what you, what you, what you want, because it must be the doubt to collection, the information that you, have to, you need to provide with all the documentation, and then you, you are, if you keep the same way, like in the same situation, you will be off the hook uh, for the next 10 years. And then after 10, 10 years, you will file for, for, um, uh, de for definitely, uh, or definite uh, forgiveness, and they will give, they will give it, providing that you have complied with the requirements and not having any income within the, the, the within the 10 year period. But, um, in other cases, whenever a business receives this notice, it's because it's a corporation. The corporations do pay taxes. So the IRS has, has given you this notice when you have a corporation and you have not paid taxes. And because of that, this is a, this is a, one of the final notice, remember, this is a, this is, whenever I say request notice of your uh, right of hearing, a hearing means that it's like an audience, like, like you go, like a judicial audience, like they want to hear what you have to say. So this is like terminal. This is like the, the last, one of the last phases, the like last step. There is one step beyond this is the season of your assets. Uh, at this point, if you have a right of hearing to explain it, what's the situation. So if you are broke, as I said before, broke, broke, then that's when you call and say yes. The letter will say where to call, by the way. It will say, the CP297 in the top right, CP97, the tax ID, the tax year, and then a telephone number and the name of the officer who you need to talk to. This, they will say, so if you call and say, yes, I'm broke, um, I have no money, I, I, I want to request debt to, collect, debt to collection or afraid because of economic calamity. And I can prove all my position. They will send you the papers, you will need some money to talk to us, uh, an, an attorney, a CPA, or an enrolled agent to check the papers, fill them out for you, <clears throat> and then submit all that documentation. I know of these cases uh, where where people even go to the IRS. Uh, the IRS actually, they, 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 there is a revenue officer appointed there. They met the, the taxpayer, and this is where things get, get worldly. The, the taxpayers start to cry, and the officer gets uh, moved he's moved because of because of the situation and then this is when it's adjudicated a doubt to collection i have not participated in those in those auditions because obviously at that point the the taxpayer has no money to afford to an accountant um and they don't know the places where where to go to find non-profit organizations who can represent them for free but i've i've heard of cases that the, this this uh, this particular uh, economic calamity is has been adjudicated, has been given to the uh, to the client, to the taxpayer because of the reality it has been real. He has proved even out of the out of any burden of proof, even with even crime that it is true. It's nothing. It's nothing beyond that. So it's a, it's given to them, and they are forgiven for the next ten years. After ten years, they have to apply. Have to send a letter to the IRS, and the debt will be forgiven. If that is the case, that's why the right to a hearing is is used for. They will be an I, and revenue officer committed to the case. You might need to meet the officer and tell them the truth. Look to him face to face. See if you are lying or not, and because they are training all this 
arts of how to detect lies. So believe me, yeah. they are trained psychologically and, and emotionally how to detect. So there you are, you are a, a, a very a very good con artist and get away con with this, or you just say the truth. The truth, um, whatever is true, you say, and and they are going to adjudicate this. But this is the point where you have to do something. Talk to a professional. If you have no money to talk to a professional, talk to the IRS and 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 fix this. Because once if you don't do this at this point, this is for your business. Problem with receiving this this letter is that the IRS is not gonna believe that your business doesn't have money. The IRS, after this, the IRS is gonna kidnap the accounts of the business, the assets of the business, the inventory of the business. And if you have a building of the business and you, you own a business, it's gonna be also a lien if for the business. This is for a corporation. So make sure that. Uh, at this point, well, I, I, not even, I cannot even say an installment agreement because there is no installment agreement at this point. They are going to request you for to liquidate your assets, um, to to sell uh, any asset that you have to put a lien. They will mildly put a lien. They will put a lien on your property. Um, the cash that is in the bank accounts will will be kidnapped, will be seized by the IRS. So at this point. Uh, the only the only way to avoid that is that you call immediately to the IRS and you have, you give them a credible explanation and a credible plan to act. Companies at the point of uh, uh, businesses, they 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 can afford. Um, if you have a business, you have money, so you are you are supposed to have to be able to afford a professional to talk to the IRS. If the business is broke, obviously you will have no money in the bank accounts, you will have no assets. You have no buildings, and basically at, this po at that point, the the shareholders will be responsible for the payment of the debt. So even if it's a company, the tax debt will not be forgiven. Sometimes not even in bankruptcy, the IRS uh, in bankruptcy procedures procedures it will not be forgiven. So make sure that you do not get to this point. If you get this point by any by any coincidence or by as a result of anything, make sure that you fix it at this point and you give a credible, a credible explanation to the IRS and a credible plan to, plan to action according to your economic situation of the company, how to pay your debt or what you are going to do uh, with the IRS. So the IRS is going to give you a break. Or if you, don't, if you don't call and you don't give a credible explanation and you do nothing, the IRS is not going to give you a break and going to come after the business. And if, if that money is not enough, after you personally. That's clear. Thank you very much. And the next following uh, two letters are has a different. They have a different code, which is LT ten five eight. Final notice of intent to levy and notice of the right to hearing. Where yeah. are, what is this one? This are uh, yes. This a letter. This a letter of of intent, meaning that there is no hearing here. The hearing time is gone, it's passed away. And the only thing is here, um, well, in this, a final notice of intent to levy a notice for your right to hearing, there's still a hope for a hearing. But this is a final notice, there's nothing beyond this. This is the last chance you have to explain there is why you have not been able to pay. So it's letter or LT 1058-1058. This is the last chance. You will not be able to do anything else. You can explain them and tell them the truth and they might accept it, they might not, but that will be the last chance. After this, uh, it will be court. Tax court will be the only, the only option. So be careful not to get to this point. Any, any final notice is not good because it's final. It's like, a, it's like when, you don't pay rent, you rent, and you have a final notice to buy the property. Understood. And the last letter of this chapter, we have the LT11, intent to seize your property or rights to property. Oh, LT11 is typically the case for um, a lien on your property. Meaning LT11 
is LT, LT and or LT are final letters, and this is when when this is like a if we can put colors to the letters, LT will be red by 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 chili red, like you are chili red. The other one could be uh, pink, yellow. Uh, there's no green here, believe me. All of them are yellow. But wow. this LT, yellow, pink, these are red. These are red, red, red letters because this is final. And LT11 is, um, there's no hearing. This, this is not an, an information. There's no final notice. You are going to be, your assets are going to be kidnapped. So you have an intent to, the intent to see the property is, by the time that you receive this letter, your bank accounts will be gone. The money will be gone until the amount that you owe. If that is not enough, then the next thing that you will have is uh, a, lien, a, a lien on your property. Even if this is a business, it will be on the inventory or on the building, that if you own the building. <clears throat> if you have account receivable, the IRS is going to uh, not, uh, send a revenue officer, take the account receivable and notify your clients to send the payment not to you, but to the IRS. These are, these are extreme measures that the IRS takes, but they are taken. I know of cases that the revenue office officer, um, just to give you an amount, uh, $50,000, and this is a company, $50,000. <clears> and there is a revenue officer, the, um, there are cases when the, the taxpayer has been, able, has been able to dispute the letter, and after a dispute period, the curable of the period of dispute, the IR, Whenever there is a disputing a, a period of dispute, the IRS will do nothing. They will not keep that asset. They will do nothing. But once they find a letter, the, the resolution letter says that no, we do not accept your the reason why you are appealing to this debt, to these penalties. We will not remove them. Uh, and if you do nothing, the IRS is going to knock your, the door of your office. This is only for companies, not for individuals. The IRS will will not ever knock the door of your house. Never. Because there is no, there is no jail for that. So that is not gonna never happen or require or request any, anything. They are going to only send you letters and then kidnap your assets, garnish your salaries, and put a lien on your property. But with businesses, it's different. The revenue officer will knock your door and will ask for payment on your debt. At that point, you have two options: go immediately to the IRS center, closest IRS center, and pay the debt in the entirely. <clears throat> or call or, or um, submit the payment in a check. Those are the options. Businesses, it's difficult to set up a, an installment agreement. There are no installment agreements for businesses. Installment agreements is installment agreements are only for individuals. For businesses, there are no installment agreements. So that's why you say of when this is a business. <clears throat> There is no employment agreement. You have to pay the amount in full. If you don't have, then they're gonna kidnap your assets, your bank account, and put a lien on your property. So remember, if you have a business, and intend to uh, to levy or notice or you or write your hearing, or a, a letter eleven, intend to see your property right. It means that there is no employment agreement, and you have to pay the full amount immediately. And the IRS is going to knock your door and say, where is the payment? When will you do the payment? And then you have to sign something that I will say. So be careful with this. It's very important that you do something. You do not get to this point. This is a red. You do not get to red because you're going to burn. It's fire. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, this is the end of the chapter number two. Remember to check if you are already subscribed to our channel. That's you will see when we publish the third and final chapter about IRS letters. And if you have further doubts, please let us know by sending us an email or comments, however you prefer. Your doubts are the fuel of this tax talk. Um, by the way, remember as well, 
uh, that we have an exclusive Facebook group and you can find the link of it uh, in the comments in the box of this uh, video. And last but not least, if you want to know more about the topics we are currently explaining, we invite you to watch our webinars about offering compromise letter from the IRS step by step and installment agreement. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Fulton, and see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.